Growing up, we weren't really taught a ton of homemaking skills um, that included cooking, so when Gabe and I got married, I kind of had to figure out how to do all of that myself. With Thomas being due in the next eight weeks, we thought that it'd be really nice to have some freezer meals on hand. So we're gonna start with an enchilada bake. I found this on some blog post a couple weeks ago and it quickly became one of our favorites. It's really easy to make. You cut up a bunch of peppers. I know you're probably wondering why I'm cutting up little peppers, but I had bought them for Laura as a snack and she decided she didn't like them anymore. So instead of letting them go to waste, I painstakingly cut up a bunch of mini peppers for this recipe. Then I put two different kinds of onions in there. If you don't like onions, you don't have to have them in here. I just think that they add a little bit extra flavor to the chicken. There's two cans of beans and two cans of corn because I was making this as a larger meal so that we didn't have to cook lunch and dinner whatever day we take it out of the freezer. And then you can pick whatever kind of chicken you want. We get the chicken from Aldi's that's, you know, I think it's called Never Any brand. It's the closest to organic that I can find in the store that actually has a reputable company. Okay, so my family never used spices growing up. We Salt and pepper were our spice. So after Gabe and I got married, I was blown away at all the yummy food that he would make that had, you know, seasonings on it. I got really good at seasoning things and now I make my own kind of seasonings. I don't use any seasoning packets. I can do anything from chili to Italian. Ham. It's not ham, it's chicken. Chicken? Chicken. Ham. Because my family has a dairy intolerance allergy, I use this imported cheese, which is also from Aldi's, and it is really good. You can use flour tortillas or corn tortillas, but because Gabe's gluten-free, we did corn tortillas. You layer the bottom of your pan with those, and then you add your chili sauce or your enchilada sauce, depending on what your family likes. This one's kind of in the middle. It has a lot of chili seasoning in it, but it's not too spicy. Apparently, I forgot to record me putting in the filling, so you put that in, and then you layer more tortillas on top, and then you top it off with more of the enchilada sauce and cheese. Now that that's done, we do a quick wash up of the pans, because these are the only two pans that I have, and we'll start on the second. This is just a basic Tex-Mex. It's not anything crazy. It just tastes really good, and it's been my, like, number one pregnancy craving. Cut up a bunch of potatoes and throw it in your pan with some onions, and then you saute that until the potatoes are nice and soft. Once your potatoes are soft, you get to add corn and more beans. We are a bean household. I cheat just a little bit with this recipe. Um, I use the same Aldi's brand chicken, but they have a pre-marinated one that's like a southwestern type of chicken. And that's what I put in this recipe along with a couple extra chicken breasts, just plain. Cook your chicken in a separate pan while your potatoes are still getting soft so that that way when the chicken is done, you can just toss it in with the potatoes and they can finish cooking together. Even though the chicken's pre-marinated, I do add a little bit of seasoning, mostly just salt and garlic. Lay that down in the pan, spread it out, and add a bunch of cheese to the top. This is the same cheese that I used in the last recipe. You can use whatever cheese you want. This is just the one that doesn't make my family feel sick. Clean up round two really quick and then start filling a pot with water for our third recipe. While the water was boiling, I did decide to sample the Tex-Mex because, again, it is one of my pregnancy cravings and it was really good. This is just a basic shepherd's pie, which I feel like most people already know how to make, but it freezes really well, so I made a big sheet pan of it to put in our freezer, again, for when the baby arrives. Again, you're going to cut up a bunch more potatoes and then you're going to cook a bunch of ground beef up.
I feel like shepherd's pie is a really popular dish uh, no matter where you go. I've seen it and had it in most states that I've visited. If you don't know how to make shepherd's pie, it's really easy. It's just potatoes, corn, and beef. Once again, because of my family's dairy allergy, I had to improvise with the ingredients. I make these mashed potatoes all the time, so I already know what I need to put in them. I use beef broth instead of milk, and then I use a little bit of butter and soft goat cheese. That way, everybody can have it. Once I get the beef broth and stuff in there, I just use my immersion blender and mash them up. This first recipe was supposed to be kind of like a lasagna bake. When your entire family is dairy free or gluten free, it's kind of hard to make lasagna. I found that this lasagna bake kind of thing ended up working out in my favor because I was able to make two of them, one for the freezer and one for dinner that night. I boiled two bags of pasta and I ended up cooking three pounds of ground beef total. It's impossible to find dairy free ricotta cheese up here in New Hampshire, so I have to make it myself. I take goat cheese and goat milk and you mix it up with all the spices that you want and it makes a really, really yummy goat version of ricotta cheese. We found this imported cheese from, I think it's Wales, that I buy at our local Aldi's and that's what I use for most of our cooking these days. So I was trying to attempt to layer it and it didn't really work because it's really hard to spread ricotta cheese on top of noodles and ground beef. I ended up mixing it all together and then pouring the tomato sauce right on top of that with cheese sprinkled on top. This was my first time making this recipe if you couldn't tell and it was kind of a fly by the seat of your pants thing. The freezer version, I did the same thing. I layered it, put the cheese on, then the sauce, then more cheese, covered it, threw it in the freezer. This one's more of an Asian style um, beef and broccoli, so it has soy sauce and a lot of garlic sauce in it. This meal is so simple because it's literally just broccoli and meat and then you cook rice up when you take it out of the freezer. For the last video, we're gonna make cookies because what is a recipe video without a dessert, right? Because we're having another baby soon, I need to work on getting my milk supply up. These cookies are my take on lactation cookies and they are amazing. I do make them sugar-free so that we can just eat them and Laura is safe to eat them too. So I use allulose instead of sugar. I'm not entirely sure what allulose is exactly. Gabe's mom looked into it and told me that it was great for a sugar replacement. There's a lot more butter in this recipe than I would like there to be, so I do end up cutting some of that out. It's basically just a ton of oatmeal and raisins. They're some of my favorite cookies ever. I froze three logs of the cookie dough, uncooked, and then I cooked one log so we had a bunch of cookies. The cookies did not last because my entire family loves these cookies. I really hate coming up with dinner ideas. It's like the worst thing about being an adult. So I hope that this helps somebody else figure out what they're having for dinner tonight. If you could do me a favor and drop your favorite dinner recipes down in the comments, that would be great. And don't forget to subscribe.